be the founding editor of a magazine uh, that he and other friends established. Um, and that was 1988, before some of you were born. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I went to America and set up a magazine that got critical acclaim, was chosen by the Library Journal as one of the best 16 new publications that came out in America in 1989 out of 584 new publications. And they won a uh, title of best publication, best news feature from Ottenay Reader, another magazine um, in America. But then we weren't able to uh, get advertising in America. Publishing in America has a different kind of dynamic. Um, they expect you to have a budget of millions of dollars, at least five to ten million dollars. Uh, that money wasn't there in the magazine that actually invited to publish. Like there was hardly any money. So we were living from week to week. And in fact, I wasn't being paid to be part of the story I tell in the chapter in my memo, which is entitled, We'll Edit for Food. So at the end of every week, you know, Professor Barton, Naji, who later become a minister in this country, would say to me, there's no money to pay you. Uh, and, uh, but let me go and buy you food. So I'll go to a shop and buy groceries. And so on. Um, so it was a moment of despair, finally, when the magazine had to close up because Achebe and uh, the other investors were mostly academics. They didn't have the deep pockets to put in money in the magazine. So after the magazine closed, um, I was confused. I had left a very promising uh, career as a journalist in Nigeria, relocated to America, and the magazine that I went there to edit had you know, shut down. And what I took to doing was, in a lot of ways, save my life, were books. So I took to hunting bookstores, and I would sit down and read all day. I would you know, put a pile of books beside me and read till evening. I will come out and go eat one meal in the day. And so one day, as I was leaving the bookstore, I ran into John Edgar Wideman, who is a fascinating American writer, one of my favorite American writers. He happened to be uh, a columnist for the magazine. So John Whiteman said to me, okay, now that the magazine has ceased production, what are your plans? I said, I didn't know what my plans were. And he looked me intensely in the eye and he said, you will be writing a novel, right? I wasn't writing a novel, but the way he posed that question, I felt the answer better be yes, <laughs> or he'll never talk to me again. So I said, yes. And you know, a lot of times we tell lies. Oh, what I call amending. So oh, oh, yeah. What I call amending the truth, um, without expecting that there will be any consequences. But John Wyman said to me, "If you could get me 15 to 20 pages of your manuscript, I'll get you. Uh, I'll see if we can get you a fellowship to study fiction at the University of Massachusetts." And that's where he was impressed. Wow, consequences to the amendment of the truth. <laughs> And so I had to weigh my options. My natural inclination was to do nothing. But if I did nothing, that would mean that I had to start uh, being dodgy around town. Because John Whiteman lived in town, and he and I were invited to the same parties and so on. So that would mean that if I saw, if I was invited to a party, I would ask him if John Whiteman was coming, if he was, and I would show up. Before I turned the corner in the street, I had to peek out. If I saw John coming out, hit it the other way. Uh, so that was one option, and I felt it was going to be, so I was going to live hermetically, really. Uh, that seemed to be a very difficult option. So I said, the other option is to write something and give it to him. He may not measure up to his expectations, and he will say to me, oh no, this is not to the standards that we expect. And then he'll dismiss me. I would say, I could feel my own side of the bag. So I got home and wrote with fever <laughs> and a sudden ferocity. Over a long weekend, I was able to cobble together 23 pages of something that was on paper. But I couldn't swear that it resembled fiction. But 
the next day, I went to John Whiteman's office at the university with great trepidation. I was hoping that he would not be in his office. But you don't want to hand him the pen and he said, oh, let me look at it. Would you stand it right there? And so I was very fortunate. He wasn't in his office. And I did it in his uh, mailbox. Um, two days later, Whiteman called me. And I would not have picked up the phone if I knew that it was white man's phone. But this was the day before color ID. So I picked up, and um, white man said, OK, I really love your manuscript. It's really fascinating. And he said it reminded him of the writing of Mukuhiwa Chiongo, who happens to be one of my all-time favorite writers. And so on, the, on account of that, he was able to get me a fellowship to start my studies uh, in the MFA program. So that manuscript became my first novel, Arrows of Rain. Wow. Now, when Arrows of Rain came out, oh, thank you. 